This is El Paso. It sits at the westernmost tip of Texas, where it borders both Mexico and New Mexico. From almost anywhere in the area, you can see the Franklin Mountains as the city's backdrop. Although they may look like simple blocks of rock, they're actually a package of layers that each serve as a piece of El Paso's geologic puzzle. So if we go back to 1.2 billion years ago, El Paso was at the shoreline of a shallow tropical sea. Over time, alternating layers of limestones and mudstones were deposited all along the continental margin. These deposits are known as the Kastner Marble, for reasons I'll explain later. At that time, there were also a bunch of stromatolites, or communities of algae. They're pretty gooey, and when the tide washes over, sediment gets stuck to them. Since they need sunlight to live, they have to crawl up through the sediment to get access to the sun, and after going through the same song and dance a few times, their efforts amount to the dome-like structures shown here. And if you look real hard, you can find them here. Huzzah! I think I found them. The oldest macroscopic fossils in the world. So, apparently some storms blew over, and the wave action ripped up the parts of the limestone and deposited it elsewhere. Around roughly the same time, basalt flows rapidly covered these calcareous deposits. Since the lime-rich muds weren't able to lithify or harden in time, the overlying load caused the carbonates to upwell and warp in response. This is called soft sediment deformation. After being exposed on land, the area transitioned to an environment characterized by rising and falling sea level. Then, around 1.13 billion years ago, the area was characterized by explosive eruptions, lava flows, and ashfall deposits. The magma chambers that were supplying the volcanic deposits rose high enough to sit right under these layers and bake them to about 600 degrees Celsius. Through low-grade metamorphism, the Kastner carvets became marbles and horfels, and the sandstones became quartzites. Eventually, this magma cooled and hardened to form granite, known as the Red Bluff Granite. If we fast forward to 70 million years ago, when the oceanic crust began subducting under the western United States, the whole area became compressed to form the Laramide and Orogeny. This initiated the first phase of uplift of the Franklin Mountains, and later, around 35 million years ago, the squeezing forces began to let loose, allowing the area to expand. This expansion then tilted the already uplifted area, which is how we see the Franklin Mountains today. Thanks to road cuts, we get to see a cross-sectional view of the layers. Trans Mountain Highway allows people to travel from one end of El Paso to the other, and since the rocks are tilted to the west, you get to drive up the layers when traveling from east to west El Paso. The first road cut hosts a lot of the Red Bluff Granite, or Old Magma Chamber. It cooled and crystallized into quartz, plagioclase, and mica muscovite, and biotite. You can even see chunks of the overlying marble that fell into the magma chamber from the roof. These are called xenoliths. This is the Kastner Formation, or the carbonate sediments that were deposited first. They're shown here as an alternating sequence of hornfells and marble that are so repetitive that they are often called rhythmites. You can even find garnets in these rocks. These mysterious holes are here because geologists drilled cores to date the rocks. Look how many they put into this one. The flat pebbles shown here are the torn up fragments from the storms. These bends in the layers are the result of the overlying basalt that caused soft sediment deformation. Notice that not all the layers are warped, otherwise a deformation could be interpreted as being tectonic in origin. This outcrop shows the Lenoria quartzite that was originally deposited as beach sands. Apparently you can see cross beds, but I couldn't find any. And even though it's called the Lenoria quartzite, it's a mix of quartzite, metasandstones, and metasiltstones. The Thunderbird group here consists of pyroclastic ash flow deposits. These rocks are the volcanic equivalent to the Red Bluff granite. It represents the material that made its way from the Red Bluff magma chamber to the surface. This area is super cool and then it shows what the environment was like more than a billion years ago. And it also shows what these rocks look like when they get baked by magma, or otherwise known as contact metamorphism. Also. El Paso is where my dad's old geology teacher lives, and he has a table full of rocks. And this. El Paso is cool. Actually, El Paso is very hot. <laughs>